to Star City Regionals, brought to you by The Wasteland Gaming. Uh, here we are in round number six. Round number six. We All got right. quite the match. We have Zach on Jeskai Burn versus Neek Hill on Jeskai Aggro. Red, white, blue spells. Yep, uh, looks like the Jeskai Mirror match. Um, ooh, and the Abbot of Carol Keep. Uh, They're not wasting any time getting into it. Wild Slash say no thank you to Rabble Master. All right, so um, looking at Zach's deck list, um, it is a little more spell heavy than the other Jeskai lists we've seen today. Uh, he has four exquisite firecrafts and three Jeskai charms in the main. Uh, so he is looking to go upstairs with all of his burn spells. Get him. Yeah, I actually got a chance to talk to Zach earlier today. Uh, we had him on backup camera a few times, but as uh, he pointed out, his games tend not to last too long as he's going straight for the dome with a lot of his spells. I can respect that. All right, looks like a goblin left over from the Rabble Master. Going to attack Zach down to 16. Or 17, and then he goes down... Er, my mistake, 16, and he goes down to 15 with the mm -hmm. fetch land. So uh, we're looking to see a lot of kind of games that look kind of like draw go, where they're just passing with a bunch of open mana just to burn or dig through time or a lot of the other. Yep, <laughs> there's four upstairs. We're just not wasting any time. Get those prowess triggers. Or was that a, that was an spell? Yeah, they're, yeah, they are, they are blistering through. Both of them not messing around at all. Getting in there. All right, and we have a Mana Strider from Zach. And looks like we have an attack for five. And it looks like Nikhil's going to take it. Go down to nine. And in turn, Jeskai Charm. Jeskai Charm, bring you to 10. Send it right back the other way. Yeah, these these players are also playing really fast. Kind of, uh, I guess you get used to it after playing a deck like this all day. Yeah. You just want to get in there, beat them up. I think they know what each other is about. They know what to play around, and they know it's just a race to the face. Right. Looks like the Mana Shredder is going to block one of the Rabble Master tokens. All right, we see an attack for five yet again. Uh, yeah, so life totals of these players are getting pretty low pretty fast. So, yeah, I would definitely make that block there. You've already seen Jeskai Charm go upstairs, so there's no need to drop down to that low of a life total. So it looks like Nikhil's going to take three, go down to five. And pass the turn. And I see Zach does have a Jeskai Charm in his hand right now. So he probably has enough for Lethal Burn. And a Storm Breath, Storm Breath. from Nikhil. Gonna hold it back on blocks. All right, so I believe that's a stoke in his hand as well. Yep. Yeah, so stoke, stoke the flame, go upstairs. Reveal Jeskai charm. Send you to one. And another stoke, finish it off. All right. Well. Okay. Well, there's game one. That game one lasted all of about three minutes. So we didn't even have a chance to. Go over their deck list very much. Um, we touched a little bit on what Zach has. So what? A, let's talk a little bit about what Nikhil has in his main deck and his sideboard. Yeah. Um, so, we have, so we saw the Storm Breath, mm -hmm. uh, which normally is a card that doesn't see a lot of Jeskai play. You see a lot in maybe Red Green Dragons or uh, Devotion decks. Um, but it, it just gets through. Oh, yeah, especially when your opponent's just having a bunch of Mana Shriders in play. Like, you're not blocking that thing. 4-4 four, four haste, prot white. It looks like uh, Nikhil also has Thunderbreak Regents in his main deck, which I like. 
Um, Combos just, well with the Storm Breath. Yeah, he's just going for big old monsters in the air. Looks like he has a few less burn spells. He doesn't have the exquisite firecraft. He's running three uh, battle stances. Yes. Which, yes. which you know, complements well with his dragons, except that Storm Breath has Prot White. Yeah, it's fine. It, it's decent removal, and it also saves your cards like your Rabble Master and your Soulfire Grand Master at the beginning of the game. Yeah, which he's running four of both those cards. All right, so for the sideboard of Nikhil, uh, looks like the only thing I can really see him bringing in here is a Glare of Heresy seems good. Um, the Anger of the Gods seem okay. Uh, they definitely kill Mana Shrider. Mana Shrider is going to be dealing damage either way, though, and the Disdainful Strokes. We just got a report that uh, Brumaz and Glare are coming in for Nikhil. Yep, yep, and I was just going to say the Brumaz has actually seemed pretty solid. Um, so for Zach's sideboard... Uh, looks like he it should be bringing in two copies of Soulfire Grandmaster. Um, a Karanos, God of Storm, seems very good in this matchup if he's trying to convert into a slower kind of deck. Um, and he also has three Disdainful Strokes and two Negates that I can see him bringing in here since Nikel does have an awful lot of spells that he probably wants to counter. It's funny that their match ended so shortly. But just talking about them sideboarding, they're still not done sideboarding yet. So. And it looks like we have a, <laughs> things a, little weird. a Karanos yep. and an Anger coming in for yep. Zach. Yep, yep. I can see that. Uh, Karanos is typically very good in these Jeskai mirrors. Uh, there's no real way to get it off the table. Um, you can have a race in... Or uh, Actually, Nikel has two erases in his sideboard, but I don't think he's bringing them here, in here he's in the blind. He's probably not expecting the Karanos. Yeah. Uh, Karanos actually seeing a fair amount of modern play as well in the sideboards of the red-blue decks there, whether it be Control or uh, Splinter Twin. But that card is very powerful. Um, lets you draw extra cards and also lets you burn them out should the game go in that direction. Okay, looks like our players are shuffling up again. Um, Five minutes to side and shuffle, <laughs> two minutes to play. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Magic at its finest. Yeah. But if you win quick, you know, we've got our ourselves. We're already six rounds deep. Gives you some time off in the rest of the round and just kind of relax oh, yeah, and recover. Uh, so back when I used to play in constructed tournaments, that's exactly what I did. I'd play – I used to play control, and uh, I was smoking at the time, so I would have no time to go outside, have a cigarette break, calm down when playing control decks because you just – go to time or go very close to time almost every round. So you start playing aggro decks, you give yourself, you know, a little time to go use a restroom, go have a cigarette, go it's relax like a little bit. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, read a book and a hammock. Just take some time for yourself in the middle Actually of these eat matches. eat a ham sandwich yeah. instead of just hitting your opponent yeah, with it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, gives you time to eat. Yeah, the control players are just, you know, grumpy and hungry and thirsty and hot and just terrible by the end of a tournament like this. So... I, I, I can respect the the deck choices from our two players here. Yeah. And and they've been doing quite well in the tournament so far. Yeah, absolutely. They are both X and O right now. This is actually the uh, table two in our uh, Swiss round. Our 230-person tournament. Yeah, they have been blazing through this tournament, no pun intended. <laughs> I um, think that was intended, Jeff. Yeah, 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 a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. All right, looks like Zach is going to go to six. Looks yeah. like... And to be fair, we have to get our banter in now before the game actually starts. Yeah, there's just no time. We're just like, yep, uh, four upstairs, four upstairs, four upstairs, you're dead. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> so uh, the Soulfire Grandmasters in both these decks actually seem really, really good in the matchup. Uh, it itself having lifelink and giving all your burn spells lifelink seem really good in the burn mirror. Looks like Zach is going to be going down to six. So, Nikhil has one of those in his opening hand, and I'm pretty sure Zach is trying to find one. Um, also, the lifelink ability on Jeskai Charm might be extremely relevant in this matchup, especially if you have a Goblin Rabble Master in play and you're hitting for just zillions. Yeah. Or a couple, you know, Thunderbreak Regents and Stormbreath Dragons. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just some, some big old beaters. I'll attack you for 10. Just kidding. I'll attack you for 12 and gain 12. All right. Uh, looks like Zach's fine on his 6, so we're... Getting off to a fast start in game two, to be expected from these two players. Uh, so, this looks like it's going to be the Soul Fire. Uh, taking a pain off his Battlefield Forge, going down to 19. 
hoping to regain it back with his 2-2 with lifelink. Right, and there's the Rabble Master. Nikhil wasting no time. Combat swing for three. Getting in there. Back to 21. Yep, so that's going to put Zach to 17 and Nikhil to 21. So let's see if uh, Zach has one of his sideboarded in Anger of the Gods in his hands. I think I see one, but yep, there it is. It's going to mop the board up. Also, Anger of the Gods with Soulfire Grandmaster in this matchup seems insane. Gaining 20 life out of nowhere seems very, very good when your opponent's just trying to bore you to death. We mentioned, uh, I believe on Thursday's stream, how Nate had uh, gotten a Soulfire Grandmaster off of a Blasphemous Act Ooh. and gained 130 life. That is, that is an awful lot of life. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a Mana Shredder for Zach. Swinging in. Three in the air. Putting Nikel down to 18. Kel just has a handful of burn. He has a Wild Slash. I think I see two Stoked of Flames. And a Bromaz, King of Rescos. Bremaz. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm used to calling him Bromaz around the store because that's what everybody has called him since the day he was printed. So. Right, and there he is. King of the Cats. It's going to take one off his Battlefield Forge again. 17 across the board. All right. Let's see if Zach has another. Oh, exquisite an firecraft. Exquisite firecraft. Uh, I assume that he's going for at the free mass. Yep. Scry lands. Keep it on top. Three in the air. And then this mana strider just chipping away at Nikhil's life total. Oh, and a Stoke and for Flames. Stoke. We're just trading spells. Yeah, absolutely. They are not interested in sending their burn spells at creatures this game, or at their opponent's faces this game. They're using it to clear the board, set up for the late game, um, which I like from Zach because he has the Karanos to work toward and the Mana Striders that can, you know, gain a little bit of an advantage. Oh, this is a big one. Yeah, so that's Soulfire Grandmaster. If he's, yeah, I was about to say, you can't let him untap with that because... He is going to be able to start buying back spells with lifelink, and that seems problematic for Zach. But we see a wild slash uh, end step on it. I think he drew a stoke. Yeah. All right, we've hit the point in the game where they're just launching burn spells at another or at one another. Four to the dome. Take Nikel down to ten. Ooh, and Zach drew another mana rider. Yep, and let's see if Nikhil stokes this. Looks like he will. Yep, so I actually like Zach's position. He's getting Nikhil to use all of his spells to take care of his Mana Shredders and then sending the burn upstairs anyway. So he's putting Nikhil under a fair amount of pressure. Uh, I Jace. believe that is a Jace, <laughs> and it will get Wild Slashed. I'm pretty sure there's five cards in Zach's yard. <laughs> At least. Bearman. Looks like another Jace. Oh, a dig through time. Whew, that's a good one. So it looks like he's going to exile everything except the exquisite firecraft in his yard. So there's two ways this dig can play out in my mind. He can either get two burn spells, because Nikhil is at 10, so he is not that far off from just getting four forward and killed. Or if he finds late game cards like Karanos, Anger, or something like that, he could set up a defensible board state to grind the game out. He can also find uh, some a Mantis Rider or a Jace, maybe. Oh, yep, and the Mantis Rider coming in. And a Lightning, lightning strike. strike. Threat after threat getting answered, but leaving all of Zach's burn spells for the dome. Yeah, and the kill is uh, playing off the top of his deck right now, and a Rebel Master off the top is not a bad one. Gonna put Zach to sixteen. And it looks like Zach has a copy of Soulfire Grandmaster was a draw for the turn. 
And what is it? Crap, it upstairs. Bring you to Taking six. the kill down to six. All right, let's see if Zach is able to finish the job. All right, so this soul fire is going to be very problematic uh, with this much open mana. So he can buy back anything he for can, two mana. Yeah, he can buy back anything, anything for two mana this turn. Yeah, and then he can start buying back Stoked Flames with Life Flame next turn, which is really, really bad for his opponent. He's going to take four in the air from the Regent. Yep, and that's an exquisite firecraft with, with buyback. buyback. Yeah. At, he's going to stoke the flames in response, which is fine. Um, so, Zach will not gain the life off the spell, but it will will put Patel down to two it's with his un opponent. Uncounterable. <laughs> uncounterable burn spell in his hand. Yep, gonna <laughs> it's just extend the hand. It's just slowly across the table. Well, uh, so that was a real fast match. Uh, we have Zach Fletcher winning two games to zero over Nikhil Patel in the Just Guy Burn Mirror, it seems like. Um, so with the match going as fast as it did, we do definitely have time for our backup match. And we're going to set that up for you guys so we'll be right back
All right, and we have our backup feature match uh, with Taylor Chamley on your right, playing Abs and Constellation, and Kendall Burdett on your left, playing Abs and Control. Uh, and we have Taylor up a game. Um, so Taylor's deck is very interesting. Uh, it is an enchantment themed. It is an enchantment themed Abzan deck. Uh, it has Eidolon of Blossoms, uh, Corsair of Crucifix, of course, Herald of the Pantheon from Magic Origins uh, to make her enchantments cost less and to gain life when they are played. She also has Sigil of the Empty Throne, also from Magic Origins. And this is a spicy one, Brad. She has Starfield of Nyx in oh. her deck. I'm a big fan um, of Starfield. The opalescence effect. Yeah. Or so it's return an enchantment from your yard. At the beginning of your at the beginning of each upkeep. Yep. And then if you have five enchantments, uh, it turns into opalescence. Well, yeah, e except every other. It doesn't count itself. Yeah. It doesn't make itself a guy, but it makes all your other enchantments creatures. Uh, it looks like we have Kendall bringing in some Dramoka's command to answer Taylor's enchantments. Yeah, and Ab er, and Kendall's deck is just a, a fairly typical Abzan control deck. Um, and Ugin in the main, uh, Elspeth, you know, a bunch of Planeswalkers, Siege Rhinos, uh, and Hostilities Languages, playing some, you know. Playing some new says. All right, all right. Ooh, I also see in his deck list he has one Tragic Arrogance, which I like. Uh, I think Tragic Arrogance is very good. It is the five-mana wrath, except you get to choose one of Creature each player's Creature enchantments, yeah. artifacts, and lands? Correct. Not lands. No, not lands. Not, not lands. Oh, goodness. That I said be... correct to the rest. No, they yeah. have stopped making those cards a, lo a long time ago. And what's really um, strong is if a card has multiple types, we have a lot of enchantment creatures, you can pick the same one for their creature and their enchantment, getting even more value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. We're also uh, featuring, as you can see, the Star City Selfie Playmat, I believe is the name of it. Yes, yes. They are... Very popular here today. Everyone was clamoring for him this morning. Um, we had a few too many players to be able to give everyone a play map, but we got we got most of them handled, and everyone's been super happy about it. So, all right, uh, looks like Kendall's going to be on the play, and both players have kept their sevens, and we have a Sandstep Citadel all mirror match. <laughs> Citadels for days. Yeah. So just to put it into perspective. We watched an entire two games from the Jeskai Burn Mirror in the time it took the Abzan Mirror to finish one game. They were actually still playing the first game uh, yes. when we went over to uh, shift people around. No, just just to give you guys at home a little perspective just as to how fast. how fast they were playing. Uh, just the pace of play and the decks themselves were just going. My heart is still pumping. <laughs> uh, I believe I heard from outside the booth uh, Zach, who ended up winning, yell, oh, it's so hot in here, <laughs> as he won. I don't um, believe he was the only one. <laughs> uh, ooh, looks like she's found three enchantments off her crew fixes in sight. Casual draw three. An abs and charm. Simon? Yes, yeah. I believe so. Uh, I don't think he's putting counters on creatures or exiling any creatures, so. Legal targets, you know, would make that hard. Or actually castable. No, that's good. The uh, both decks are kind of slow, a little grindy. The enchantments get value uh, quickly, but you know, not early. Yep. So he's got some he's got some life to play with. Looks like Taylor had to discard two cards uh, on her end step. Looks like she just Started a Nyx Weaver and a land. Uh, and Siege Rhino. A Siege Rhino, uh, putting Kendall to 21. And Taylor to 17. I think we had some pain lands get hit. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. He tapped one off his Caves of Koilos to play the Abzan Charm. And there's the first enchantment creature. <laughs> uh, one that we are used to seeing. Most decks are playing Corsair for its for its effects, not necessarily for its subtyping. No, uh, or its main typing, I suppose. I, w I wonder how many people Taylor has gotten over the course of the day, where she just goes turn three Corsair, or the Corsair of the day. Oh, I did it again. I didn't even mean to that time. <laughs> no pun actually intended. 
No, but it's interesting that she can go turn three and everyone thinks everything's normal and then she slams a sigil of the empty throne and her opponents just don't know what to do with all the angels. Uh, it looks like her hand has a hero's downfall, a banishing light, a doomwake giant, a sigil of the empty throne, and a nix weaver. Um, looks like she is running the promo versions of banishing light and uh, doomwake giant. Kendall taking a second to write down the cards that he knows about. How do you like the Doomwing Giant in against Nab's End list? Um, it's fine. Uh, it's bigger than a Seed Rhino, which is good. Uh, if you can start triggering it multiple times. Yeah, six six. No, oh, it's a four six. Oh, it's a four six, right? Correct. And um, then every time it triggers, it's just gonna sink that Rhino. Correct, correct. Give them minus one, minus one. Uh, but also, these games are gonna go late. So if you ever have a Doomwing Giant and a bunch of extra mana. You can just pump mana into like your Farika or play a bunch of creatures in the same turn and end up getting that trigger several times to just wipe their board. Plus, so with Starfield in play, you're basically saying, I'm going to start my turn with your guys at one smaller. Yes. Uh, it's also very good against Elspeth, which is a card that she saw in game one, I believe. Yeah. I, so, it's and Kendall's running in. three Elspeths in the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely fine to keep the Doom Wakes in. She has four of them in her main deck, so I wonder, again, I wonder how many people she has just gotten over the course of the day, which is four main deck Doomwake Giants. Nice tokens deck, jerk. Man. Uh, both our players here are 5-0. and oh. uh, They, I believe, were table five. They were, they were definitely high up on those tables, that's for sure. All right, so... You're not going to get in there. Taking Taylor down to 14. And it looks like uh, Kendall's Thoughtseize took the Sigil of the Empty Throne. Um, I believe that was the card that Taylor used to beat, beat up on Kendall in the last game. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm, I'm just hoping to see a Starfield, actually actually bring some stuff back because we've been we've been testing around with it and we've been we've been seeing it at least you know back back with my uh, my play group and to see it do this well uh, is something i'm very much looking forward to yeah, her deck looks sweet it has it's obviously uh, a lot of synergy um most of the absent decks just go for raw power level they just are the best cards in the three colors we're playing play a really good card every turn and just get you Ooh, we see a dromocus command from kendall um, Dramoka's command seemed very, very good against Taylor. Buff my Rhino second enchantment, please. Uh, I believe he uh, put a counter on his Rhino and either made her second enchantment or fought it. I don't. It doesn't really matter because um, <laughs> that Corsair is now dead. I feel like you go for the sack just to be safe in case they have a removal spell. She she had a lot of mana open. Yeah, yeah. She actually does have a hero downfall in place, so that's that's a fine fine line. All right. Um. So let's see if she plays the Doomway Giant here. Looks like she's just gonna pass the turn. She needs to try to take care of the Siege Rhino as soon as possible. Because it being a five six is it's going to get in there. Yep, and we have a hero's downfall in the right now. And a courser for Kendall. Yeah, revealing another courser on top. Yeah, Kendall with some enchantment creatures of his own to bring to the table. We have Taylor cracking a fetch going down to 13. So Sandstep Citadel was a draw for Taylor. So let's see, would she rather uh, put the, yep, I was about to say, put the Nyx Weaver down and start trying to gain value with that. 
uh, milling cards over into her library or into her graveyard, setting up for a Starfield Star of Nyx later. Or she can uh, actually sacrifice or exile the Nyx Weaver to regrowth one of those cards. Alright, we have a Banishing Light on the Courser. That's not terrible. Uh, it's more of a, I'm playing enchantment, sir, you need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she... Or just, you know, removing the only threat on the board. Yeah, I mean, Kendall has another um, Courser uh, on top of his deck, revealed by the other Courser. But, he did not play a land that turn. So, you know, maybe she's trying to keep him from... She's making him spend a... yeah. Play a card to even try to get another land drop on top of his deck. Trying to stifle his mana development as best she can. She, she mills two. I believe she milled a uh, hero's downfall and a banishing light. Oh, that was not a hero's downfall. That is a copy of Extinguish All Hope. Uh, destroy all non enchantment creatures, creatures, which is a. Uh, a combo wombo, if you will, with the rest of Taylor's deck. As we mentioned before, synergy through the roof. Yeah, absolutely. This Abzan deck, the first couple of turns, looks just like any other Abzan deck, but after she casts a couple spells, mills a couple cards, you definitely know it's very, very different. All right, we have a Doomweight coming down. Hero's Downfall to draw from Kendall. Ooh, and a land on top. We finally got his fourth land drop. Unfortunately, it does interplay tap. But it'll still gain him a life off his Courser. And allow him to scry, deciding whether or not he wants to keep his sixth land on top of his deck or not. I can't quite make out what Kendall has in his hand. I do see a Abzan Charm and a Seed Rhino. The rest of the cards are a mystery to me. Um, I wonder if anyone in the room is packing back to Nature's. They seem very good against Taylor's deck. Oh, there's a downfall on the Nyx Weaver. I know there was a lot of talk about that card um, with the Rise and Fog, or even the Blue Enchantment Control. Or uh, People are seeing the uh, Sphinx's Tutelage as, as more of a win con for Control. So I know there was a lot of talk about Back to Nature, uh, but I'm not sure. I know neither neither our players are currently running it inside. <laughs> I don't assume Taylor is. Um, all right, so we have a Courser from Taylor triggering the Doomwake Giant. Just taking the hit. Need that land advantage for a Courser. As we see there. Gaining a life. And Elspeth, uh, gonna minus three, take care of the Doom Wake. Gain a life off playing Fetch Land. Falls with another Doomwake. Yeah, which is really solid here, because that means if Kendall is going to plus one as Elspeth, which I assume he's going to do, he can't minus it anymore. Um, a any enchantment. Any, yeah. So almost any card in Taylor's deck can trigger the Doomwake. Right, we have an Abzan Charm exiling the Doomwake. Um, which is not bad. Uh, he doesn't really need to draw any cards. He just needs to kind of ride this Elspeth to the wind. Um, and he's already taken care of two Doomwake Giants, so. Yeah, and that exile is actually relevant with, as we mentioned, the Starfield. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Taylor's going to have enough time to set up a Starfield in the next, uh, this game. Kendall's going to be able to kill her with this Elspeth pretty quick. Uh, especially, I don't believe Taylor has any more cards left in her hand either.
And a Siege Rhino from Kendall. Taking Taylor to 11. Bringing him to 19. Actually, I believe the card on top of her deck is another Doomwave Giant. Yep. Yeah, the uh, non-promo. Yeah, the time. regular art. That's what threw me off. I was trying to figure out what it was. One thing about Constellation is they trigger themselves the first time they come in. Absolutely. So all of them have essentially an Enter the Battlefield effect. Goodbye, Soldier Tokens. Which is good. Uh, still no good attacks here for Taylor. She's going to need to draw something. Yeah, we're going to see. Really good. It looks like an Eidolon is on top of her deck. Land off the top. Yep, we're going to scry to the bottom. And a Tragic Arrogance on the top of Kendall's deck. Now, with the enchantment creatures here, this is what we were talking about with that extra value. You can basically say, this one creature lives, everything else gone. If only two creatures on the board, it's not super great. Oh, especially if you're going to hear us downfall. Actually, the way Tragic Arrogance is worded, you can pick one of them as the only enchantment to live and the other one as the only creature to live, and Taylor will not have a board anymore because it'll destroy all the other enchantments, all the other creatures. But, oh. yeah, yeah, so you, it's, it's... you flip them. Yeah, it's actually pretty sweet. Um, looks like an attack from the Siege Rhino going to send Taylor to 7. So Tragic Arrogance seems especially good against the Constellation deck. Right, an Eidolon, and it looks like that is a... I'm not sure. That's a... A Herald of the Pantheon. Uh, Eidolon of Blossom? Yeah, an Eidolon of Blossom drawing Herald of the Pantheon. Oh, okay. our deck. Very nice. Yeah, card draw engines. Always wonderful. Um, it, I mean, she needs to play all these creatures as chump blockers, essentially. She is getting really low... On life with this huge rhino just barreling in. And it looks like a hero's downfall on top of Taylor's deck. Scry land off the top, gain a life. Actually, should bring Kendall to 21. Right, and we see a Nissa on top. For Kendall. Yep, and there's the Tragic Arrogance. And he's going to pick uh, this as the enchantment. And, oh, I assume he can just make her chump block with the Eidolon. Um, yep, and then he picked that as the only creature and that as the only enchantment. Ooh, and he gets his horse are back from killing her banishing light too. Dramoka's command. Dramoka's command. Uh, plus Sack. one, plus one counter second enchantment. Uh, rumbling in for seven here, sending Taylor to one. Plus Elspeth. Oh, excuse me. Plus Elspeth. Yeah, and it looks like a. Taylor's going to scoop him up, drawing heroes downfall. It's just not enough. All right, and we have Kendall uh, forcing a game three here against Taylor Chambly and her pretty sweet Abzan Constellation deck. All right, so now that we've watched the decks actually play out for an entire game, um, what do you think uh, in Kendall's or Kendall is bringing in out of his sideboard? Uh, well, we saw him already bring in uh, his Dramokas commands. Mm -hmm. uh, both of those were in the side, not in the main. Those are definitely staying in. Uh, to, there's no situation where you take those out against this deck. Uh, I can actually see him, if he wants to get a little spicy, bringing in the Hollowed Moonlights uh, just to answer the Starfield. But that seems a little edge case. But they do cycle. It seems a little... I don't know. Yeah, that seems, that seems a little medium. Um, I, I don't think Taylor has any other cards that that would be good against. Um, no, Dramoka's Command seems just 
more than enough. Maybe read the bones to kind of sift through his deck a little faster. Yeah. He's he's gaining a fair. They're both gaining a fair amount of life off of their um, their siege rhino. Well, siege rhino for for Kendall and a little bit here and there for uh, the courser. So the life loss from as we mentioned before the Abzan charm going into sign of blood mode, and the read the bones is really not gonna hurt them that much. However, draw two, scry two, very strong. All right, looks like players are drawing their opening hands. And looks like both players are gonna keep. Uh, we have a Temple of Malady from Kendall and a Windswept Heath from Taylor. Taylor's gonna crack that Heath, go down to 19, fetch up the land. So, let's see if Taylor has that turn to Herald. That would make her deck go way, way faster. Oh, oh. she certainly does. All right. Herald, one of the new cards from Origins, uh, makes all of your enchantments cost one cost less, and you gain a life every time enchantment is played. Yep. So, it looks like a Thought Seize from Kendall. Uh, we're going to see a hand of Corsair of Prefix, uh, Eidolon of Blossoms, Citadel and Land of War Waste? Uh, yes. So he has two Coursers. Um, I think he has to take this Eidolon, because yeah. if she untaps and plays a turn three Eidolon before she plays all these Corsair crew fixes, it's going to be bad news for Kendall. Yeah. Yep. She's going to get a lot of card advantage out of that. So, uh, looks like... <laughs> and she drew a Doomwave Giant. Four mana Doomwave Giants seem mighty. Yep, looks like she's going to lose a life off her land and then gain it back when she casts Corsair, and then she's going to gain one from oh, the land entering play. And that's a Sigil of the Empty Throne on top of her deck. <laughs> Correct, which she can play next. If she has an untapped white source in her hand? Yeah. Oh, she has a little more waste. Okay. Well, she might have one on top of her deck. Uh, Beauty of Corsair, you can always be like, eh, it's just one deeper. We can get there. Corsair. Corsair with the Herald pulling double duty on Enter the Battlefield Life Gain. <laughs> Lands or every other card in my deck. Minus, you know, maybe Navzam Charm. Yeah, she just she just gains a life every time any of her cards get played. So that's that seems pretty good. And looks like Kendall's gonna pass the turn back. Yeah, with a hero's downfall at the ready. All right, so time was just called in the uh, regular rounds. In the regular rounds, yeah. Um, I believe there may have been a judge call earlier in their game one match, right. um, but they also do have a small extension for playing on stream. It takes us a little bit of time to get them set up. Yep. So, so they're not quite into turns yet, but they're not far away. All right. We're so gonna go coarser again. Yeah, and this game does not look like it's gonna end anytime soon. So he took a little damage from his pain land. Of course, are going to crash in for another two. Zendikar lands as far as the eye can see. Oh, yeah. We've had quite a few of them. Languish. Ooh. And there's the Languish to sweep this up. Uh, it looks like he's going to lose another one off his pain land. Dropping to 12. Um. Well, uh, if she could find her fifth land... It would make her follow up really, really good with a Sigil of the Empty Throne. Uh, now would be the turn to cast it. Uh, she has another Corsair into a, an Eidolon of Blossoms, I believe. So that's not the worst thing in the world. All right. So we have Abzan Charm on top of Kendall Trick. <laughs> and a Thought Seize. Uh, looks like Kendall should, yeah, take the sigil. Um, he has a hero's downfall in his hand for the Doomwake Giant. Or, I'm sorry, an Abzan Charm in his hand for the Doomwake Giant. <laughs> and there's another one on top. Cool. If only she could find 
her fifth mana. Um, I guess you can put the Sylvan Carrington in play. Uh, I don't think this board is juicy enough to get in hostilities. So, I mean, maybe. Let's give that white source. With Kendall seeing the sigil on top. Yeah, sigil look like it can actually close this game out really, really quickly. Siege Rhino. And then Dr. Siege Rhinoceros shows up to play. Now, where where did he get his uh, doctorate again? Um, I believe it was uh, at Khan's University. Khan's University. Ah, yes. Old KU, known for their. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna stop that train there. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Nick Weaver on top. Uh, yes, it is. Um, A little bit of glare. Let's try to get that fixed up. Yeah, the lighting in our venue is not the most conducive to uh, watching, watching our stream. Yeah, it does not like the sleeves on these cards. So it looks like a sigil from Taylor, uh, which is setting her up quite nicely to start flooding the board with 4-4. Four four. She does have a Doom Wake in her hand and a Nyx Weaver on top. And I don't know if Kendall has any way to deal with that. I don't believe he has any reclamation stages in his 75. No. Well, he's a bit behind on mana, but if he's able to hold on for a few more turns, he could drop an Ugin and just wipe it. All right, so time has been called at the feature match area. Uh, Kendall is turn zero, I believe. Um, so they will have five more turns to finish this game and declare a winner. <laughs> and Kendall is taking no time. He's like, all right, this game's about to be over. Send him in there. Uh, Taylor's going to take four. Ooh, and we have an Abzam charm pumping his Corsair Crucifix to kill Taylor's. Oh, man, this is brutal. And a Dramokus command putting a counter on Siege Rhino and making Taylor sack her sigil of the Empty Throne. Yeah, uh, so Kendall might be able to actually close this out. Close this game out. Before the end of turns. Um, it was not looking great for him with that signal in play, but Kendall was able to string together a couple of uh, well time removal spells and completely wipe Taylor's board. Nine power on the board. Going to turn one. Yep, that little dice up there, just a reminder for you guys at home. As to what turn we're in. Alright, so Taylor is going to have to play probably the Doomwake Giant. Um, she doesn't have enough time to start setting up with the Nyx Weaver, so she's just going to need a body in play that can start blocking some of these creatures. Land off the top, go to 12. And another land on the top of his library. Oh, jeez. Oh. All right, well, here's an attack for eight. Uh, sending Taylor to seven. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an attack for nine. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, that, I that uh, yeah, Dramokus command buff my Rhino. Siege Rhino is five, six seems very, good. very big and strong. So uh, that'll take Taylor down to six. And Taylor with a Nick Weaver in hand needs the top of her deck to be, I don't know, somehow an extinguish all hopes and a land at the same time. That seems it's gonna need. Seems a little rough, but yeah, Kendall just putting his Den Protector in, like, all right, well, I'm going to get you no matter what. <sighs> going to think about this card from her Temple of Malady. So Taylor's going to have to play this Nyx Weaver, and it is going to have to block probably the Corsair of Crucifix. Um, no, actually... No, it has to block the Den Protector. Because 
Sylvan carry to kind of not block the Dinner Protector, and she will take a lethal attack. <laughs> and a Siege Rhino on top. Just it's not gonna get Kendall's to deck. Here. Just run it, run it on pure gasoline at this point. Just hit after hit coming right off the top. Rhino 2 will go through. All right, yep, just a couple of chump blocks. Okay, go to 2. All right, and Siege Rhino is going to trample over for 2. And Death Protector is going to get into 2. Sending Taylor to 2 life. Play Courser, play land for turn, go to 12. Looks like we're gonna see a draw here. Taylor on turn five, game ends at the end of her turn. Unless she can, this one card just 13, oh, Courser. Nope. All right, so. Looks like a draw. Um. Yep, so players are discussing the end state of that game. Uh, there is not a concession, so they both players are going to receive a draw. Uh, Round 6, 501, still great standing. Yeah, absolutely. They are still definitely in contention for top 8. All right, so uh, we're going to end this one really quick uh, so we can come back to you guys for Round 7 of Star City Regional, brought to you by Wasteland Gaming. Mm -hmm. um, this is Jeff Stouter. And Brad Vance-like. And we'll see you guys in a little bit.